The New Economic Policy Section Shall we be able to work for our own benefit? We had deserters from the army, and also from the labor front. We must say that in the past you worked for the benefit of the capitalists, of the exploiters, and of course you did not do your best. But now you are working for yourselves, for the workers and peasants' state. Remember that the question at issue is whether we shall be able to work for ourselves. For if we cannot, I repeat, our republic will perish. And we say, as we said in the army, that either those who want to cause our destruction must perish, or we must adopt the sternest disciplinary measures and thereby save our country, and our republic will live. That is what our line must be. That is why, among other things, we need the new economic policy. Get down to business, all of you. You will have capitalists beside you, including foreign capitalists, concessionaires, and leaseholders. They will squeeze profits out of you amounting to hundreds of percent. They will enrich themselves, operating alongside you. Let them. Meanwhile, you will learn from them the business of running the economy. And only when you do that will you be able to build up a communist republic. Since we must necessarily learn quickly, any slackness in this respect is a serious crime. And we must undergo this training, this severe, stern, and sometimes even cruel training, because we have no other way out. You must remember that our Soviet land is impoverished after many years of trial and suffering, and has no socialist France or socialist England as neighbors which could help us with their highly developed technology and their highly developed industry. Bear that in mind. We must remember that at present all their highly developed technology and their highly developed industry belong to the capitalists, who are fighting us. We must remember that we must either strain every nerve in everyday effort, or we shall inevitably go under. Owing to the present circumstances, the whole world is developing faster than we are. While developing, the capitalist world is directing all its forces against us. That is how the matter stands. That is why we must devote special attention to this struggle. Owing to our cultural backwardness, we cannot crush capitalism by a frontal attack. Had we been on a different cultural level, we could have approached the problem more directly. Perhaps other countries will do it in this way when their turn comes to build their communist republics. But we cannot do it in the direct way. The state must learn to trade in such a way that industry satisfies the needs of the peasantry so that the peasantry may satisfy their needs by means of trade. We must see to it that everyone who works devotes himself to strengthening the workers' and peasants' state. Only then shall we be able to create large-scale industry. The masses must become conscious of this, and not only conscious of it, but put it into practice. This, I say, suggests what the functions of the Central Political Education Department should be. After every deep-going political revolution, the people require a great deal of time to assimilate the change. And it is a question of whether the people have assimilated the lessons they received. To my deep regret, the answer to this question must be in the negative. Had they assimilated the lessons, we should have started creating large-scale industry much more quickly and much earlier. After we had solved the problem of the greatest political revolution in history, other problems confronted us, cultural problems, which may be called, quote, minor affairs. This political revolution must be assimilated. We must help the masses of the people to understand it. We must see to it that the political revolution remains something more than a mere declaration. End of section.